Hello, everyone. My name is Judd Helenza. Uh, we are going to be presenting this webinar here, but we still have people uh, rolling in. So we're going to wait another minute or two, uh, and then we'll get going. Uh, in the meantime, I do have a joke for you, a really bad dad joke. What was Forrest Gump's password for his computer? Uh, the answer is one Forrest one. So we'll be back in about one minute. <laughs> Good one. I liked it. All right, Judd, I think you can go ahead and get started. We can kick this off now. Perfect. All righty. Well, everybody, thank you for joining uh, us on this Wednesday, uh, the 20th of May. Uh, today's webinar will be the first in a series of webinars that we will be presenting. That is, AlphaBold will be presenting on uh, business intelligence. Uh, today, we will be discussing our experience uh, with solving issues around machine-generated data and uh, our solutions utilizing Microsoft Azure and Power BI. Uh, next slide, uh, Vest. Today's speakers, uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Avest Islam. He has over 11 years of experience in consulting. Uh, he has been with AlphaBold as our practice manager here, our business intelligence practice manager for over two years. Uh, he specializes in obviously business intelligence, but also is familiar with data sciences, enterprise data warehousing, and uh, big, big data analytics. Uh, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, I am Judd Helenza. Uh, I'm a client and engagement manager here at AlphaBold. I have over 10 years of sales and customer service experience in the computer software industry. Uh, and um, I'm focused on providing the best solution to help any business dominate their markets. And I'm committed to servicing customers and maintain uh, long-term relationships. Uh, next slide, if you don't mind. Uh, I wanted to share some of our BI-specific industry solutions and dashboards. Uh, here you can see the industries we are working with or have worked with in the past. Um, we will review the details of each one of these and the solutions that we created uh, to help them manage their data more efficiently. We have done a lot of sales forecasting. Uh, for sales, we have done demand planning and order management. We have created ex uh, extensive reporting in ERPs and CRMs for different companies. Uh, we've also created event tracking and scoring matrix, uh, scoring matrix on the different platforms our customers have. Uh, for power generation customers, we've built big data solutions focused on power consumption. Uh, the biggest problem for all of them is the huge amount of data that they ingest. Uh, obviously, to help them process their data, we have built some anomaly, uh, some anomaly detection solutions utilizing statistical models. Uh, we have extensive experience working with companies in the semiconduct, uh, semiconductor industry. Uh, for our semiconductor clients, we have worked to create BI solutions for sales forecasting, uh, design wind processes, uh, NPI, and demand management. Uh, for healthcare, most of our clients we have helped uh, utilizing BI have been medical device manufacturers. Uh, they tend to be very similar to our manufacturing clients. Uh, that is, um, you know, manufacturing specific. Uh, for patient health, we have built BI dashboards for patient care, uh, patient advocacy, and patient scoring, as well as uh, solutions to rank and work with patients as brand ambassadors. Uh, finally, we have created many solutions for our manufacturing and AEC clients. Uh, for AEC-specific industries, we have developed our own IP called Bolt Build. 
Uh, it is a unique analytics layer on top of uh, it uh, that is on top of CRM. Uh, it helps with uh, things like project budget um, versus actual equipment tracking, marketing, uh, analytics and sales forecasting and for uh, again for manufacturing clients we have built solutions utilizing our experience with AI, uh, BI and IoT to help them with predictive maintenance solutions. Uh, Aves you want to take it over from here? Thanks Next George time. for introducing me. Um, I am Aves Aslam and Let's go to the discuss. Uh, let's go through the agenda of this webinar. Um, in this webinar, I will explain what is big data and why big data analytic analytics is so important for your company. Uh, then I will present big data problem scenario. Uh, after that, I will introduce you with all the Azure services that will be used to solve the big data problem. Primarily, we will discuss Azure Storage Account and its component, uh, mainly on data, uh, Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Then your synapse uh, and its architecture, and I will show you Power BI ecosystem and how its wordy back engine works on aggregated tables for big data analytics. Uh, at the end, I will present a working demo solution for the stated big data problem. Okay, so what is the big data and uh, why we are talking about the big data analytics uh, big data analytics examines large amount of data to uncover hidden pattern and to find other insights uh, here we are talking about running analytics on petab uh, petabytes of the data and solution that is capable of handling unlimited amount of data uh, one thing that that you will see in every big data project that they face to handle unstoppable growth of the data the amount of the data solution was designed to handle rapidly increases. Uh, the solution we, the solution uh, we will discuss in this uh, session is handling terabytes of the data. Although uh, the uh, the platform that we choose ensures uh, performance of the solution will not degrade even on petabyte scales. And why big data analytics is so important for us? It helps us to reduce the cost. Uh, for example, big data technologies such as uh, Azure Data Platform bring significant cost ad advantages when it's come to storing large amount of data as compared to the traditional methods. Uh, it also helps us for faster and better decision making. Um, and it also helps us to uh, identify the new products and identify the uh, uh, sensors or the machines that require new services. Okay, let's discuss the case study. Um, a company that has factories around the globe and has thousands of small induction motors. They have they also have installed sensor with the motor to send data to the cloud regarding the electricity usage of each motor. Um, and each sensor is responsible for sending delimited info to the cloud with pulse rate of 15 minute interval. And this delimited info consists of ID of the motor, usage of the electricity in the interval and the timestamp. At the end of the day, cloud service processes these records and create a CSV file and store it on a send drive. Now let's do some math on the data yielded by this process. For instance, I have explained that uh, this process create a CSV file per day and the size of the file is five TV and it consists of 40 million rows in it. And if we uh, run this process for the month, then it will accumulate 150 GB of the size uh, of the CSV files, and the total rows will become 1.2 billion rows in all the CSV files. So if we go up on the date hierarchy and uh, aggregate this information on the year level, uh, then all the size of the CSV files become 1.8 terabyte, and the rows uh, in um, all the CSV files will become 14.4 billion. And we have solved this problem for our client that has the data uh, of more than three years and it uh, and the data was around 5.4 terabyte of the size and it consists of 43.2 billion rows in all the csv files well to handle this mammoth amount of the data we choose azure data platform and power bi for big data analytics in next slides i will explain each service of the azure data platform that will be used to solve this problem and at the end i will show you actual demo of it 
So uh, first service is the Azure storage account, and uh, no, and I will explain the Azure storage account. And uh, uh, and it is very important to know that um, what is the data lake storage Gen one to understand the Azure storage account and the Azure data lake Gen two service. Data lake Gen one is Apache Hadoop file system that is compatible with Hadoop distributed file system, and it works with uh, Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, it provides unlimited storage and can store a variety of data for analytics. It doesn't impose any limits on account size, file size, or amount of the data that can be stored in data lake. We can, we can also perform USQL, Spark, and HD inside jobs on Azure Data Lake for data massaging, and it uses Yarn platform. These, these, these jobs are used to process, clean, and uh, shape the unstructured data. Okay, now let's talk about the um, Azure Storage account. The Azure Storage Storage Service is sort of parent service that supports multiple subservices, and these services are designed for different types of data and use cases. Uh, well, Azure Storage account provides five types of storage services. Um, the first one is the blob, the second one is file, the third one is the table service, and the uh, fourth one is, is a queue, um, and then we can uh, we can implement data lake gen 2 uh, features on the blob service I, I will explain it uh, how we can enable it for blob services so in the blob it is designed to store large audio video or uh, text and any type of the, of the file and it supports uh, a pen blob block blob and the page blob file structure each structure is designed for the specific type of uh, type of usage of files and then we have a file service. It uses Samba protocol and used to keep files for virtual machines. For instance, uh, Windows VMs running on Azure Cloud can share or store their files using files uh, using file service. Then in table service, it is no SQL data store. It can store terabytes of the tables and entities in JSON-like format. It doesn't enforce schema on the 10 entities. And then we have the queue service. It keeps these messages in queue format for uh, future processing. So uh, let's talk more about the data lake Gen 2. For this demo, data lake uh, is the focal point for us. You can assume it as the best of the two worlds, um, as it combines functionality of the data lake Gen 1 with the blob storage features. Uh, although there is not any separate service on Azure uh, as a data lake Gen 2, but we enable data lake Gen 2 functionalities on blob storage containers to create namespaces and hierarchical folder inside the blob storage container. It can also uh, enable us to run USQL and Spark job on blob storage. So as we have discussed, um, Data Lake Gen 2 is the extension of Azure blob storage and pretty much the same uh, service uh, as, blob uh, as a blob storage. So when to use Data Lake Gen 2 uh, and when to use blob storage, um, the, the diagram uh, on my slide is a typical example of enterprise data warehouse process recommended by Microsoft. Uh, as per Microsoft, these services are interchangeable and behave the same in enterprise data warehouse process. Although blob storage is good at non-text-based files like database backup, photos, videos, um, audio files, whereas Data Lake is better at large volume of the text data and also, if you want to run USQL or the Spark job on unstructured data, then Data Lake Gen 2 is the only option in Azure Storage account to use. Okay, let's look on how your build will look like for um, Azure Storage account. If, for example, if you have 132 terabyte of the files and you have performed 100 million operation on it, and each operation is a size of 6 MP, then Microsoft will charge you $2,771 per month. Interesting thing is uh, this, this total bill of the storage account is less than the AWS S3 bucket and have a lot of more features than S3. Um, we can also help you to forecast the storage account billing based on your load, uh, as we have done it for most of our, of our clients. Okay, so the next service is Azure Synapse. Uh, Azure Synapse uh, is limitless analytics service that bring enterprise data warehousing and big data analytics together. 
uh, it has a massive it has massive parallel processing engine that is responsible for query distribution which is the most powerful feature of the synapse and um, and the architecture of the synapse is is the node based as you can see here there are a lot of nodes on this architecture diagram and i will explain you uh, one by one uh, what is the purpose of each node in, in azure synapse so let's talk about the um, control node we have only one control node in azure synapse application directly connect with control node and um, issues t sql command which is a single point of entry for all our application then control node run the MPP engine, which optimizes the query for parallel processing, and then passes operation to compute node uh, to do their work in parallel. So what are the compute nodes? Consider compute node as a SQL Server instance, and all the instances are working together in parallel to solve a one query. Uh, each compute node is responsible for storing data and storage account. Uh, we can choose number of compute nodes, uh, which range from one to maximum 60 and it depends upon uh, DW uh, units select, selected. Uh, we, can, we, can call, we can also call it SQL pool. In this case, uh, we have DWU 400 um, and Microsoft has assigned uh, four compute nodes to this SQL pool. And you can see uh, in the diagram, there is associated DMS service with each compute node. So the purpose of the DMS is to uh, transport data between these compute nodes. And the main responsibility of the DMS is to ensure the right data gets to the right location at right time. And at the bottom, we have the Azure Storage account layer. Uh, Azure Synapse stores data in Azure Storage Service, uh, and obviously it has separate charges from the computing, uh, from the computation. Um, and the basic building block of Azure Storage is um, is a distribution unit. By default, Azure Synapse has predefined 60 distribution inside Azure storage account. And we cannot change this number. Our distribution is um, storage location or segment inside the storage account uh, that is responsible for um, keeping the data um, reside inside the table. And, and then compute nodes are mapped to these distribution. So for instance, if we have max, maximum 60 compute nodes, then each compute node will be associated with single distribution. And if we have only one compute node, then it will map to all the 60 distribution. This is how we can predict the performance of Azure Synapse based on the compute nodes and the DWU selected for the performance. Okay, so um, in Azure Synapse, we can create table uh, in using the two distribution strategies. First one is the hash distribution and second one is the round robin distribution. Um, hash distribution is a mechanism that is designed for higher security performance for joins and creating aggregation on, um, on large tables. Uh, Azure Synapse shard data into different distribution using hash function. Um, and then in, in round robin, um, as it is completely non-deterministic method of storing data, and uh, it is much efficient for bulk insertion, as the engine doesn't have to calculate uh, hash for each row. Although joins uh, and round robin, on round robin table require reshuffling of data, which take additional time. So uh, rule of thumb is if you are creating a fact table, then use hash distribution. And if you are creating state tables, then it is recommended to use round robin distribution mechanism. So next topic is the external tables. Uh, before explaining external table, it is important to discuss Polybase. Uh, consider Polybase as a generic data connector for Azure Synapse, uh, which is responsible to fetch data in Azure Synapse from heterogeneous sources. It can source data from Data Lake, Hadoop, Azure Storage Account, NoSQL database, and even from the um, from Open Database Connectivity. Uh, the table we create using Polybase are only stubs um, and do not contain any actual data inside Azure Synapse. Although external table gives us power to run um, SQL query on unstructured data hosted on external sources. So this is the main purpose of creating external sources, external table in Azure Synapse. The pricing model of Azure Synapse is very much simple. Uh, we have to pay per hour for computation based on the service level you have selected. Um, 
and it is recommended to use minimum DW400 service level for fraud load. Um, and if you are a mid-level company and running, uh, building something on development environment, then you can use DW200 to DW300. And if you go up, then um, the processing power of um, Azure CNFs increases. And so the price is also increases. And for the storage, we have to pay uh, $122.88 per terabyte per month. And if you have used less than a month, then it will charge you $0.17 per terabyte per uh, hour. So uh, it is it based on uh, how much you have used this service. So uh, Microsoft has provided the pricing comparison for Azure Synapse, Google BigQuery, and AWS Redshift. Um, in case if we process queries um, on test H benchmark data on all three platforms, you will be surprised to see Azure Synapse uh, will charge you only $33 and Big, Big Query will charge you $564 for the same queries, which is 94% 94, 94 higher than Azure Synapse. And if we run the same queries on the Redshift, then it will charge you $48 um, uh, for, for using the AWS service, which is again 46% uh, higher than the Azure Synapse. So Microsoft is clear winner in pricing and performance of uh, when it's come to cloud data warehousing. So Jud, do you have any questions so far? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Olivia has got a question for us. Uh, yeah. Olivia? Yeah, so Aves, we had a question a little while back more in the beginning, but somebody asked, is it more about preventative maintenance or predictive maintenance for motors? Well, it is preventive maintenance uh, with the diagnostic features. For example, we are going to create a solution uh, in which we can identify the potential um, uh, malfunction devices, and we can also investigate why it has happened um, in the past. So. It is kind of hybrid approach that we are adopting in it. Got it. Okay. And then I do have one other question. Um, is there a reason why we haven't chosen Cosmos database to capture sensor data? Okay. Yeah. So uh, Cosmos DB is perfect to uh, capture the data, mission mission critical data. Uh, for example, if we have um, if, if we have the time interval between the uh, pulse of the pulse of the generating data is less than a uh, second or if, if data is generating within millisecond, then it is better to use Cosmos DB. But uh, we have 15 interval, uh, 15 minute interval of the data, so we can easily manage it using um, uh, using on-prem server. Hi, great. Uh, if uh, anybody in the audience does have any additional questions, we will have a short uh, break near the end where we can answer any questions uh, at that time. So don't worry if we uh, missed your question this round, we're gonna have a, one more round of questions uh, in a little bit. So uh, go ahead and send them in like you have been up to this point and we'll uh, discuss them uh, in a few minutes. Uh, Vest, you wanna hop back in? Okay. So now I'm going to um, discuss Power BI and its architecture. Uh, well, in Power BI, it takes around 80% of the development effort for data massaging and data modeling, and it takes only 20% on making visuals. Uh, in Power BI, we create Power Queries data extractors uh, script to source data from outer world. And in case if we are using um, import storage mode, then we will then we move all the data to Power BI data model using Power Queries. Uh, and once we have the data inside Power BI cubes, then VertiPack engine kick in. Um, main responsibility of the engine is to store data, do IO comparison, uh, compression, uh, apply filters, um, join tables, and do basic aggregation, which is a pretty much brain of Power BI. This engine makes Power BI the best analytics platform when it's come to the performance. Now I want to show you um, how Power BI aggregation features help us to do big data analytics. Uh, in Power BI, aggregation starts as a table, just like any other table in the model, but with fewer rows, uh, rows as compared to the detailed table. 
once in the model, these tables can be configured so that the engine can use them instead of detail table to answer queries when possible. For instance, uh, we have two tables, as mentioned in the image. One table is with product level granularity, and one table has the date level data. If someone is interested in getting info on product level, then Power BI engine will redirect query to aggregated table. And if someone is interested in get, getting data on date level, then um, engine will redirect query to, to the detail table. So in most of the cases, we keep detail tables on directory mode uh, to save the data size of the PBIX files. And I will show you in my demo how I have implemented this feature uh, to, uh, to present the big data analytics. The licensing of the Power BI is pretty much simple. Um, if you are if you are doing analytics for yourself and you don't want to share with other people, then Power BI is completely free. Uh, you can upload it on the service. You can uh, you can uh, do your analysis, uh, but you cannot share this thing with anyone else. Uh, if you want to share it with your company or with uh, outer world, then you have to purchase Power BI Pro license, which is nine point nine nine dollar per user per month. And there are a list of features um, in the pro account that are not available in uh, free account. And then uh, Power BI premium capacity comes in. In this premium capacity, we purchase the dedicated resources on the Azure cloud, and, um, and we use the dedicated resources for our analytics. And uh, one more feature of the premium is we do not need Power BI pro account for the end users. So now it's time to the demo, uh, but before the demo, I want to show you the architectural diagram of the solution that we have implemented um, for the big data analytics. Um, we have the log files, we have the uh, CSV files on our left side. And I am using Storage Explorer to upload all the CSV files to the uh, Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Uh, we can also use Azure Data Factory but for the sake of simplicity, uh, I'm using Storage Explorer uh, to dumping all the data uh, from the on-prem server to the Azure Data Lake Gen 2. And then in Azure Synapse, I am extracting uh, all the Data Lake Gen 2 data inside the Azure Data Warehouse using the Polybase. And then uh, Power BI comes in. Uh, and in Power BI, I'm using hybrid model uh, to source the data from the Azure Synapse. For example, I will import summary data inside the Power BI data model, and I will use direct query mode uh, to run analytics on the detailed data, which resides inside the data warehouse. Okay, now I'm going to present um, uh, my demo here, and from and I I want to start it with the CSV file that we have. Uh, this is a CSV file. Um, and it, it is a raw, raw data that we get uh, from the server. And it has around nine columns and each CSV file. And it has around, let me go to the town. Uh, it has around 22 million rows uh, in one CSV file. And, and these columns and these rows are uh, representing 15 minute, minute pulse uh, of the data interval, which has a start date, end date, and the ID of the motor. Um, and the client name uh, append with the row. So uh, I am using, as I have explained, uh, I am using as, uh, Azure Storage Explorer to upload all these files into my data lake. So you can download this uh, Azure Storage Explorer from the Azure portal, and it is easy to use, and it is very intuitive uh, as compared to the web portal. We can also um, we can also do the same operations um, from Azure portal but using Azure Storage account is more intuitive and, uh, and it will save you a lot of time. So I am on Azure portal now, and as you can see here, you can download uh, Azure Storage Account Explorer from here. And if you wanna to navigate to the container, then you can navigate to the container storage uh, where we have hosted all my uh, all our CSV files. In it. Same thing, I can do it uh, using the Azure Storage account. We have uh, we have 15 files, and each file is the size of the 2.2 GB, and each file consists of uh, 22 million rows. And I will move all these files uh, to the Azure 
um, synapse and from Azure Synapse to the Power BI. Okay, so now I have been connected with Azure Synapse and I want to show you the data orchestration that I have built on it. Um, we have the external table, one external table which is sourcing data from the Azure Data Lake and then uh, we have this st stage table and then we have the two table one is the uh, aggregated table and what is uh, one is with the detail um, detail level aggregation so let's talk about the external table that we have in azure synapse uh, to create an external table you have to create an azure uh, azure ad application uh, to secure the communication between an azure synapse and the uh, data lake so you have to provide the key here and you have to create a uh, credential object with the name uh, as you want and then we have to then we have to provide the data source location for example in this case we are using azure data lake gen 2 uh, i am providing the folder name and then um, and then i have to provide the uh, storage account location and if we want to make this thing uh, secure then we have to use abfss protocol and I'm also providing the credential with this data source. So uh, it is binding the credentials with the storage account. Then I have to create the external format uh, that we have in Azure Data Lake. So it is delimited text file, which is um, uh, with the comma separated uh, text. And uh, we can provide for the, um, for, from where our first row starts. So it is the complete information of the CSV file. So we are using polybase syntax uh, to create an external table. So Combine all this thing, um, we have to provide information while creating the external table. And as you can see here, the syntax of the external table is pretty much same as we, we have standard tables in SQL Server. We are using the same uh, database structure. Um, uh, we have using same column structure that uh, we use for uh, SQL Server tables. And then I am providing uh, the storage account location and the file format. Uh, and when I will execute it, then it will create an external table uh, in my Azure Synapse. So as I have uh, mentioned in my uh, presentation that uh, external table doesn't contain anything inside it. So if I will execute this thing, it will take around um, more than uh, 10 seconds uh, to fetch the data from the Azure Data Lake. Um, so it's better to move this data from Azure uh, Data Lake from Azure Data Lake to the stage table. So first of all, we have to create a stage table. Otherwise, if we um, if we directly run on the external table, then it will it will be very expensive query to um, run such kind of queries directly on the external table. So it's always recommended to uh, get data uh, from the external table and dump it into the stage table. So once we have uh, once we have created this stage table, then you can then you can query um, your storage stage table using the same syntax uh, as you are familiar with SQL Server. And as you can see here, we have around 327 millions of rows in this stage table. And it has the same column that we have in the external table. Okay, now I'm going to create two more tables uh, based on using this uh, data that we have in the stage table. And why I'm creating these two tables? Um, I am creating these two tables to, uh, to use the aggregation um, aggregation feature of the Power BI. One table is the detail table, uh, which contains all, all, these, all the rows and all the granularity that we have in stage table. Uh, as you can see here, I have created a motor usage table and I can perform, um, and I can perform more cleansing step here before moving the stage data into the actual um, warehouse table. And then we have the fact table, uh, and you can treat it as an aggregated table. Um, uh, and in this aggregated table, I am using a group by statement. So it is it is aggregating information on the date level rather than keeping it on the 15 minute interval. So when, when I have uh, done this thing, it, it has reduced the rows from 327 million rows to 7 million rows. So we have two set of the uh, tables, one with the 327 million rows and one with 7 million rows, and both have the same columns. In my, ne uh, uh, in my next uh, presentation, I will show you how I will map this uh, two table inside Power BI data model. So 
I'm going to present the Power BI report through the Power BI service. So whatever you will see in this thing, it is not pre-cached and, um, and nothing prepared for the, especially prepared for the demo. And the response time that you, you will experience in it is the actual response time that Power BI service uh, will give us using the Azure sign apps. So this is a report uh, in which we are, we are creating um, analysis on, on different data of the motors. So for instance, let's talk about all the uh, charts here. Uh, this chart is aggregating all the data on the daily level. So we, we have uh, data from 1st November to the 15th of the November. You can see the trend of, um, of the motor and its consumption per day. And in this chart, um, uh, it is showing the uh, data usage per motor and the data quality uh, in it. And this chart is specially designed to qualify the uh, data quality um, that we are sourcing from your synapse. And this is the data ring uh, that I have selected for, uh, for this um, slice. Here. So let's take an example. Um, I, if I select one, uh, another report, another assembly number, then as you can see here, it refreshed instantly without any, any delay. And what if, if I select multiple motors in it? So as you can see, it is rendering instantly without any, um, it, without any delay on the Power BI service. And let's talk about the third case. But what if, if I select all the motors that we have in, in our data? When I will select this thing, you can see here, all the motors have been rendered on Power BI report instantly without any delay. And, it is, and the response time is lightning fast. Okay, so fourth case, um, what if we want to uh, see the actual data behind this report, the actual granularity, which is the 15 minute interval. For now, we are running analysis on the daily level interval of the data. But if, what if we want, someone want to see the uh, actual granularity of the data? What, are, what is the data behind? Uh, behind this motor and wh what was the actual data uh, that has uh, been summed up on this bar chart. So for the diagnostic analysis, if you click on the report and click on the drill through detail page, then it will fetch the data directly from the Azure Synapse. As you can see here, it has fetched the data within two seconds and we have done the same thing with, uh, on other platform and it was taking around more than 15 minutes to fetch this data, uh, it's the same amount of data. So the Power BI aggregation concept in Power BI is really much um, efficient uh, while we are dealing with big data and analysis. And as you can see here, uh, it, these analysis have been running on 327 million of the rows. So this is pretty much amazing. So how we have done this thing in Power BI data model? So first of all, this is my Power BI desktop, um, and I have sourced this aggregated data, uh, aggregated table, and the detailed table from Azure Synapse. And if you go to the advanced editor of it, uh, you will see that uh, it is sourcing from um, web, web, <coughs> webinar server database, um, and uh, database name is warehouse pool. And it is using select static from all the aggregated data. And same is the case with the detailed table. We are sourcing all the um, we are sourcing all the columns and all the data from the detail table. And uh, until now, we have we have never mentioned that uh, we are going to store this data inside the data model. So uh, we we will do this thing uh, when when it comes to the data modeling of the Power BI. So this is my uh, data model of the Power BI. And we have the Power BI uh, motor user detail table and the motor user aggregated table. Uh, these are the tables inside my um, inside my Power BI data model. And one is with the storage motor import, and the detail is set to uh, direct query the Azure Synapse. So in aggregated table, uh, we have made it import storage mode. So what Power BI is doing here, it is fetching all the data from the Azure Synapse and keeping it. Uh, keeping all the data inside its own queue. So it is it is pre-cached inside the Power BI data model when we are talking about the aggregated uh, table. But for the detail, um, it, doesn't in, it doesn't store anything uh, inside the Power BI data model. So 
how these two tables are communicating with each other and how uh, Power BI knows when to redirect the queries to the aggregated table and when to redirect it on, on the detail table. So first of all, we have to go to the uh, detail table and click on the manage aggregation. Sorry. So first of all, we have to go to the aggregated table and then we have to click on the manage aggregation. And then here I am providing the mapping of each summary table with the detail table that we have in Power BI data model. And, and I am telling Power BI that if we if someone is using the same granularity that we have in Power BI summary table, then use this summary table rather than um, uh, rather than uh, sending query directly to the Azure Synapse. And for the total KWH, I am uh, I'm setting the aggregated function to the sum. So it will aggregate um, consumption of the KWH on, on this granularity that I have mentioned here. So this is how Power BI redirect queries from um, detailed table and uh, from the aggregated table. And, and the last thing, we have to hide this aggregated table um, inside the Power BI data model. So all the analytics or, or business user that want to build something on top of this data model has to use this data table rather than aggregated table. So this is a little bit tricky here. So when user will create a report on, side, um, on top of this thing, as you can see here, uh, you, there is only one table, which is a detailed table and aggregated table is hidden inside it. So Power BI will use the aggregated table as an um, pre-cache data for its own analysis. So um, I, I, have you, I am using detail table column uh, in these visuals and um, on the fly, uh, Power BI will uh, decide either it has to send the query directly to the um, Azure Synapse or um, if the data is available on the cache, then it will fetch the data from the cache data. So that's pretty much from my side. Over to you, Jared. Thank you, Avesh. Uh, I wanted to take a moment to see if there are any more questions. Uh, Olivia, uh, you let me know earlier that you had another question from the audience. Yes, uh, we did. Thanks, Avesh. So uh, the other question we had was, can we directly run analysis on Azure Data Lake instead of using Azure Synapse? Yes, we have a Power BI data connector for Azure Data Lake. So uh, if we have small amount of the data that we can import inside the data Power BI data model, then we can directly use Power BI data connector for Data Lake. But um, mostly uh, we have the large amount of the data inside the Data Lake. So it is not recommended always to use um, a data data lake connected for, for this thing. So it's always better to cache your data, um, orchestrate your data inside Azure Synapse, and then source the data from uh, uh, using the Power BI from, from Azure Synapse. Got it, okay. And then we do have a couple follow-up questions. They're kind of looped together of us. So uh, the first one is, once you've built the data model and reports in Power BI, is it updated automatically via a live feed? And then well, there's two other questions, but if you want to answer that one first. Yeah, so uh, we have to schedule, we have to enable schedule refresh for this thing. For example, um, the, the data that I have cached inside Power BI data model will be refreshed um, when we have to, uh, when we have, when we, according to the schedule refresh that we have created on the service. Uh, and for the direct query, if you are, if you are using direct query data model, then it will automatically get data uh, when it is it is needed in, you know, on the report. So when you, we when you, we use direct query, then we don't have to create any schedule refresh for it. Got it, uh, okay, that, so that uh, answers the what, second part What would that. be the minimum amount of time uh, period that we could uh, set it up uh, for to refresh? And what are the drawbacks to having it refresh very quickly? Well, if you are using Power BI Pro account, then you can uh, schedule refresh it by um, eight times per day. And if you are using Power BI Premium, then you can increase the refresh rate um, to eight, 20 times per day. Okay. Sorry, Olivia. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, so 
we are running a little bit tight on time, but for any other questions that we have that are coming in right now, we'll make sure that we um, get those answers to you right after this webinar. But yeah, please continue to, to add them in the chat here and uh, we'll make sure we get those answered. Thanks, Olivia. Um, so how do we do? Uh, I guess, uh, would you like to discuss uh, a project with someone that can help you better understand the benefits we're using uh, one of the BI solutions we've discussed today to wrangle uh, your large data sets. Uh, what we have found here at AlphaBold in helping out, uh, you know, uh, several people here uh, with their uh, BI uh, big data issues is that uh, our clients benefit from a one-on-one -on -one workshop. That's usually the best way for us to engage with you. Um, the whole point of the workshop is to learn more about your business, what your existing processes are to handle data. Um, we will work with you to brainstorm ideas and different solution sets uh, that we think will work well for you. Uh, we'll identify and define business challenges uh, that we can help you solve with uh, one of the BI solutions or maybe a unique BI solution uh, that we've shown you today. And then at the end of the workshop, you should have a business case for adoption of BI or possibly not. Uh, one thing that we did want to mention, um, there is no charge for this. We just want to get uh, together with you and figure out what you're doing and figure out if we can help you. Um, so next slide, please. Thanks, boss. This is our contact information. Uh, I do want to let you know that we will be reaching out with after the webinar uh, to provide you with a copy of the webinar that is a recording of the webinar. Um, also touch base with you, see about possibly scheduling that and look for any comments or feedbacks um, about the webinar today, about the webinar that we had today. Uh, see if you have any ideas uh, or suggestions for improvement. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is an ongoing series that we will be presenting. Uh, so any suggestions would be very helpful. So uh, Olivia, any other questions or is that it? I uh, know that about wraps it up for us. Um, thank you so much, Aves, and, and thank you, Judd. Uh, we will be in touch with all of you shortly and hopefully we get to meet you all in person in the near future. So thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone, for joining my webinar. Thank you. Have a nice day.